So I'm back down the beach again. Back down the coffee cup, it's been a while. The weather's been absolutely horrible for weeks as you know, but in the last few days, it's just flattened right off. You can see the sea behind me, it's as flat as a mill pond. I popped out on Tuesday, it's Friday tonight. Popped out on Tuesday, three days ago. I came down here with Mark and uh, we didn't get the cameras out. We just had one of those sessions without the pressure. Just fishing, a couple of mates fishing, having a bit of a laugh, having a chinwag. And I caught a few fish. I, had, I think I had three or four dogfish and a nice pollock about two pounds. So it was quite a productive session. Um, but it's the rays we're after. And there's reports of them coming out locally. So tonight it was a bit of a bit of an opportunist one. The wife was going to be going out tonight, but then she decided at the last minute that she can't be bothered. So quickly got some bait out of the freezer, put some stuff together, whack the clothes on, and I'm down here. I've got two rods out at the moment with bluey on each one. Just bluey, big lumps. And the little rods, I think I'm gonna ping them out in a minute with some sand eels or maybe some squid wraps or something. But we're down here, we're doing it. It's, it's calm, it's clear. I think it's gonna be a cold night, but I've got plenty of clothes to put on. Got plenty of bait. It's about, let me see what time it is. It's about six o'clock, I think. 10 past six. Um, 10 past six and our tide's about 20 past nine. So got about three hours up and maybe fish it down for an hour, see how it goes. So yeah, I'm just gonna get these other two rods out now and then I'll get back to you. That works. <coughs> we're rocking, we're rocking. Don't mean we're rocking, I mean the bucket's rocking. I've actually got no tripod tonight. Got the tripod, but there's a little connector thing that goes in the bottom of the camera, which locates in there and locks it in place and I don't know where it is. Probably in my camera bag, but because I'm traveling late, I just literally grab my camera, grab my tripod and left all the other stuff at home because the GoPro and the drone and all that sort of stuff just don't need it on the night sessions. You can't really see anything in the dark with those pieces of equipment. Anyway, so I've got it perched on the bucket and I've got my little light there and it kind of works. Um, so we've got four rods out. I've got two out on just bluey and I've got two out on bluey and sand hill. Um, I've got some squid as well, so I'm just going to mix it up tonight. Um, got a couple of anglers fishing to my right you might know we've got the Portsmouth angler Jake and we've got Wayne angling addict 75 both got YouTube channels um, I'll put their channels in the description if you haven't checked them out yet um, go and check them out a couple of local lads really good lads um, and well worth a watch um, yeah key jingling it's that sort of moment when the awful rods are out and it's waiting for the first thing to happen it's just getting dusky now um, as you can see behind me, that sky is sort of that light blue. It's twilight and it's a couple of hours before I water. And I think that is absolutely bang on. It's calmed down. I can open a little bit of a knock on that right hand rod. It's calmed down the weather. The tide is a good tide. At the right time of day, I think it just says good fishing, you know got good fishing written all over it. There's another angler down there, there's a couple more the other side. I think it's one of them nights, it's Friday night, everyone's finished work. The tides are perfect, the weather's good. You're gonna get anglers out. But fingers crossed we can get something. Like I say, I went out on Tuesday and did have some dogfish and a pollock from here. So it is fishing, it is productive. And I think less than a week ago, there were two nice big undulates caught from Hasler Wall, which again, is literally not too far away from where we are right now. So. They're in the area, fingers crossed. It'd be great to get back on the road trail. So as you can see, it's pitch black now. It's about 10 to seven. So the big rod's been out there for about 40 minutes. And the two small rods been out for just shy of half an hour. Very, very quiet at the moment, no bites. It's a lovely evening. Very, very gentle breeze. It's a bit overcast, but it's not forecasting any rain, which is a good thing, because I've got no shelter. I did have a shower, I had that black one, I picked it up cheap second hand for 20 quid and uh, it done a job for a little while but it wasn't ideal and I tried to put it up in the wind the last time I was out and as I was trying to, it broke and it bent and I got the up with it a little bit. So yeah, I'm shelterless at the moment but I am looking around for one, I do want to get one because I, I like, even if it's going to be dry and there's no wind, I still like to have that bit of a shelter just to tuck things away. Um, I can keep the camera inside and keep the wind off the microphone. Even if there is a gentle breeze, sometimes you can you might be able to hear it now actually. So yeah, I need to get one. But uh, yeah, I would have thought we'd have started to get a few boats by now. 
so I think I'm going to wind these in just to have a look at them, see if they've been crabbed out or maybe the white in have stripped all the baits apart. But I've had no, no indications that any of that's happened, but I'll wind them in anyway just to have a look. So I just found the rods in and that's been out there an hour and that's absolutely untouched. One of the rods I pulled in, put a fresh bait on and put it out and I had a bite straight away. It was a waiting bite, but um, it was a bite. So I think once they've been out for a while and the, the blood and the oil and stuff have been washed out, I think it's time to get them in and put a fresh one on. So I'm gonna give these about 40 minutes each rather than an hour and uh, see if that does anything. But yeah, rods are really quiet. So the one bite, one waiting bite, and, and that's it at the moment. But uh, the night is still young. Just going to freshen them all up now and get them back out there. Right, calm down, focus, and regroup. Starting to get a few bites now. But um, because I wasn't going to fish this weekend, I didn't bother charging any of my headlamps. So my two main headlamps used the first one for about an hour and it just went dim on me. So I thought, that's all right, I've got another one. I'll get the other one out of the bag, put it on my head, and after about 20 minutes, that one went dim. So I remembered that I had this one, the little carp fishing one, in the back of the car. Luckily, I have three AAA batteries in my box. Always carry spares, guys, you just never know. So I've got to get out a jail card. So just before I went, ran back to the car, just wound all four of the rods in. All the baits were pretty much intact, because they'd been out there a while. The blood and the juice and the the, the oil must have just washed out and the baits are just sitting there pretty lifeless um, so I wound them all in cut them all off put four fresh baits on and just had them clipped up and ready to cast when I got back from the car so I've got my new headlamp sorted out and I've just put all four of them out and by the time I put the fourth rod out the first one started getting a bite on it I know it's just waiting just tapping at it but it just makes a difference that freshen up of the bait and the extra scent trail I've got two anglers to my left, there's another angler, sorry, two anglers to my right, another one up past them, and I've got Wayne and Jake to my left, and I can see another three or four anglers past there, so there's loads of scent going into the water. There's got to be one or two fish out there. But at the moment, fairly slow, but just starting to get a few jingles now. It's, time-wise, let's have a look. It is quarter to eight. So we've got an hour and a half before high water. So fish are tied up. Got plenty of bait. I've used one bluey so far and I've got another two left. So we've got enough bait. Yeah, I think fish it to eye and then maybe down for an hour. We'll see how it goes. So I found the little button that goes underneath my camera and goes onto the tripod. So the tripod's working now. I did have it on an upside down bucket, but I've got it on the tripod now, which is good. Um, yeah, dead slow, dead slow. Tide's really pushing now. A uh, couple of rods I've left out there that are, are you know, fast in the bottom with the grippers. But the other two I've just freshened up and put back out and they've just swung straight around. So the tide's really pushing through. Dead quiet, a couple of anglers down there caught. I think Wayne's had a couple of whiting, scratching about with little size twos. There's another angler just down from him who's had a whiting and a little rocklin as well, scratching around with little auction little baits. But I'm sticking to my guns here. I'm keeping with the keeping with the big big hooks and the big baits um, maybe over high water when it goes slack won't, won't pick up something then um, and maybe I want to fish it down for an hour because um, I haven't got work tomorrow so I'm gonna I'm gonna see it out for a bit but I'm not gonna fish too late because I've just had three really late nights in a row fishing Tuesday working Wednesday and Thursday and obviously tonight's Friday so I don't want to kill myself too much for tomorrow but yeah still got a bit of time left sky is completely clear loads of stars really really lovely evening very very gentle breeze coming from from this side and yeah lovely evening to be out so it's about 10 o'clock now which is about 45 minutes after high tide and it's still dead quiet for me but down the beach i've seen i think wayne had a dogfish and i've just seen a load of lights come on and someone wandered up i think it was another angler a little bit further on but with a nice undulate ray. So they are out there and they are feeding. And I think with four rods out there, with big baits on each one, we've got to be in with a chance. Just want one of them bells to start jingling, one of them rods to hoop over. Fingers crossed. We've got squid and sand eel wraps on each rod at the moment. I 
I'm just looking at the bluey. I might maybe have a wind in, put a nice fresh lump of bluey on each rod, and then sling them out there for sort of like the last hour. Last chance to live, as it were. Yeah. So, as you can see, back in the office, and it was a blank. You put your eggs in one basket like that, and that can happen. Um, I did have all four rods on big hooks and big baits. Um, I felt sure that something was going to happen. I think confidence um, was really, really high, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to catch a ray tonight or something decent. Um, but it just didn't happen. There was fish caught further along. Wayne had uh, some weight in and a, and a small smooth hound as well. Uh, Jake had some some weight in. Cormac a little bit further on caught an angelette on a size two hook and mackerel and ragworm cocktail. So yeah, definitely fish to be had down there. Just you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so while we're in the office, I just want to have a little talk about a few bits and pieces that I've got recently. Um, a good friend of mine, Alan, contacted me after he watched my video when I was fishing on the little boat with great big long rods. Um, and in the video, I said that I wanted to get some shorter rods, you know, something a bit more purpose built for the job. And he contacted me and said that he had a couple of a couple of spinning rods that were surplus to requirements. He just bought some new ones. Um, and if I, if I wanted them, I was welcome to them. So anyway, we met up and I got these couple of lovely sort of LRF spinning rods and a couple of little reels to go with them as well. Um, and uh, they've been fantastic. I haven't really used them much, to be honest, at the moment, but I haven't been out on the boat and it's uh, I kind of associate that LRF rock type fishing with sort of spring and summer, not winter. Um, so I've got that stuff on the back burner. Um, and uh, just recently, again, he watched one of my videos where um, I was moaning about carrying all my stuff down to Gill Kicker. Long walk, and I was loaded up like buckaroo. I was knackered when I got there. I said I needed to get a little trolley. Anyway, he contacted me again and said that he had a, a little green trolley with, with wheels that I was welcome to again if, if, if it would uh, come to some, some use. And so I met up with him again and to pick up this trolley. And they gave me some more stuff. I've got some, some, some more spinning rods and, and some more reels and, and a, little, a little bag and all sorts. But in there was this little thing and uh, I think this is absolutely fantastic I'm just gonna hold it up there so you can see it it's a little elastic dispenser I didn't even know these things existed they didn't went off beach fish before but it comes with these little refills you can get with different strength elastics on them so there's a green and orange which signifies the the diameter and the fineness of the elastic I guess and I think the one that's in there is a green one um, and they, it just holds it, not tight, but tight enough so it doesn't all fall off. But when you're wrapping that bait up, it's just perfect. It keeps it all neat, it keeps it all out of the way. And I think that is an absolutely amazing little tool. I'll put a little link in the description so you can track it down. But um, yeah, that that is uh, that's a bit of a game changer. I've used that for the last couple of sessions and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, in there as well, was this lovely little gunky, gunky spinning reel, little green one with some, I think that's four pound fluorocarbon on there. So the little six and seven foot really light LRF spinning rods, this will be absolutely perfect for. Got loads of little spots around the harbour as well where I can do that sort of fishing. There's blennies and there's wrasse and there's all sorts, little pollock, little bass. It's going to be really fun doing that this summer. Um, and this is the other little reel that he gave me this time around. And that is a Alcedo. Again, lovely little spinning reel. Got a spare spool with that one with a mono on. And this one's got 20 pound braid on it. So, fishing in the harbour with, I've got some sidewinder lures for fishing for fishing for bass. So I think that'll be an ideal, an ideal reel for fishing with those. So yeah, well chuff. Thanks again Al. Really appreciate it. And that stuff will definitely go to use. You will see that in, uh, in upcoming videos this summer. Um, I've got this little float as well, I think. Which is really cool. It's like a little, oh, it's like a little egg, a little buoyant egg with a freeway swivel on it. And I can only think that that would be used for perhaps fishing a live bait. Um, main line going to that bit of the swivel and then off of here would be your hook length your snood however long 
with a live bait on it and I suppose that would just drift about out there and uh, fly under when we catch something what's that called? I can't read that, I haven't got my glasses on but it says on there that it floats yeah so uh, another good little piece of kit and these, there's a load of these in here as well and I'll, the, I'll see these like the old Nash surface bullets so stop that with a couple of rubber a couple of little rubber beads, little float stops and uh, use that for surface fishing because then when the fish takes the bait on these the weight of that sets the hook so it's a kind of bolt effect so there, uh, I've been watching the Nash boys use them and uh, now I've got some, I can try them out this summer so while I get it open I'll just talk you through the editing space that I use uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, I've used a few others but I found Premiere Pro the easiest to use and it is the market leader, it's the industry standard so it makes sense to use that and I've got used to it now, I use it at work as well for my job so um, I kind of know it inside out and editing's just getting quicker and quicker all the time um, down here, this, this panel along the bottom here is the timeline that you drop the stuff onto as you play it through it comes up on this monitor so you can actually see what you're doing um, this is the effect so on this panel here you can actually move stuff around make stuff bigger and smaller um, sort out the, the volume adjustments this is where you pop all of the footage is here from the memory card and that gets dropped into here and that's your project folder with all the bits of footage in um, here are my presets for effects so for example um, I export in 4k because it looks better but I actually record it in 1080p so I've got a preset here which scales it up to 4k from 1080p so I've already built that and I could just drop that straight onto the footage um, and that sorts it out automatically just makes things out a little bit quicker quicker and this is my Lumetri color panel so this is where I can click on a piece of footage and adjust the color or the exposure and that sort of thing um, and then over here I've got my own little folder that I've built up which has got some sound effects in it it's got some transitions it's got some cinematic LUTs there's a few bits and pieces in there like a little uh, like a little cinematic toolkit if you like and with regards to music I've, I've used a few different music providers um, I started off looking through YouTube's audio library uh, but I exhausted that pretty quickly I mean from the tracks they've got actually all usable tracks um, there, there, was a, there was a chunk, there was a few, but obviously I don't like to keep playing, putting the same music on over and over, so I, sh I went with Epidemic Sound, which is about, I think it's £10 a month you pay, and then you can you have unlimited downloads, and the beauty is that you, you put that track on your YouTube video, and it's fully licensed because you paid £10 a month, and they've got thousands and thousands of tracks, and loads and loads of um, sound effects as well. Um, and music bed popped up so i tried music bed so i went from epidemic to music bed and i used music bed for a few months and and then i found myself exhausting their stocks a little bit so i've gone back to epidemic and i'm glad that i have to be honest um epidemic i think they've got a much wider library and they've got the sound effects as well for an added bonus um, and if you i've got a little link in the description if you're interested in that you can click on the link and you can get a free one month trial so if you make YouTube videos and you want to put some music on um, just give it a go because it's it's a month free um, and you can download as much as you want in that month and use those on your videos um, and you haven't got to worry about any copyright or anything like that and then at the end of it if you like that then you can start paying £10 a month um, and, uh, and carry on that service I think it's really good but yeah links in the description for that um, I'm going to get on with some more work now because I find myself rambling when I sit in front of the camera too long. I've got a poorly little girl downstairs as well, so I've got to keep nipping downstairs just to make sure she's all right. Um, but yeah, one, no more fishing for me this weekend. But I'm hoping high tide early next week, perhaps Monday or Tuesday evening, it's going to be around, I reckon around midnight. So I reckon that'd be perfect for putting the kids to bed and then getting out about eight o'clock and then fishing it up until about midnight. Um, it means a late night and I'll be knackered for work next morning, but that's the price you pay, I guess. And I've also got one more day's holiday to use during March. It's the 7th today, so I've got about three weeks of March left, and I've got to get a day off. So, 
It's either going to be out in the boat or maybe doing a bit of course fishing, a bit of carp fishing somewhere, a bit of a morale booster because the beaches have been quiet for me quite recently. But whatever I do, I'll bring a camera along and show you what's going on. So thanks so much for watching this one. Tight lines and enjoy.